Hey guys, welcome back. I, you know, I've never introduced myself. My name is Emily and I started doing this during the pandemic so that I could read to my kids who I couldn't be around because of COVID, but I continued on thanks to my, one of my sons who wanted me to keep reading to all of the kids <laughs> who might not be able to read themselves or have somebody to read to them or parents that just it's easier for somebody to read to them right now. Um, I don't make any money from this. I've included the ISBN number so you can easily get the book or I've also included the electronic ISBN number. So if you wanna hear somebody else reading it, you can, or there's a separate ISBN electronic number for the library, which I've also included that were provided for me. Um, I wanna thank Mr. Peter Brown for writing this awesome adventure for us, and why don't I just start reading it? All right, here we go. Chapter 46, The Spring. With each passing day, the sun climbed a little higher and its rays grew a little warmer. The last patches of snow melted away and color returned to the land. The pasture, the fields, the trees, they were all turning bright green and the air slowly filled with fresh smells of spring. Many of the cows had begun steadily growing bigger and now calving season had arrived. When it was time, when the time was right, each cow went out to the pasture so her calf could be born on soft grass. The robot stood nearby just in case anyone needed her help, but nobody ever did. Even the first time mothers knew what to do instinctively, and soon newborn calves were frolicking around the farm. Spring was happy, exciting time, and yet Roz was distracted. More and more, she found herself looking to the skies, hoping to see bright Bill and his flock. She knew they were on their way. Chapter 47, The Dinner. Mr. Sharif ho hopped out of the truck with his arms full of shopping bags. He limped toward the farmhouse, dragging his leg in the usual way, and then he fell. Roz ran over and found the man sprawled on the driveway, groceries scattered around him. Are you okay? She said, pulling him to his feet. Mm, I'm fine, he grumbled. Roz started picking up groceries and said, let me help you inside. A minute later, the two of them were stepping into the house, jackets and hacks hung from pegs on the wall. Shoes were lined up beneath the bench. The man peeled off his boots and hollered, kids, it's time to cook dinner. Footsteps pounded across the ceiling and the children came flying down the staircase with their dog. Is Roz having dinner with us? Said Jaya. Roz doesn't eat, said Jazz. I know that, but she could sit with us. How about it, Roz? Said Mr. Sharif. Care to join us for dinner? The robot stared at the family. The family smiled at the robot. What would you like me to do? Said Roz. In a very proper voice, Jad said, I would greatly enjoy the pleasure of your company for dinner. In a very improper voice, Jaya said, I order you to stay for dinner. The children didn't wait for a response. They snatched the groceries from Roz and scampered off. Oscar ran after them barking. Is that food? It smells like food. I want food. The wooden floor creaked as Roz followed Mr. Sharif through the living room. A comfy chair and sofa faced a darkened electronic screen. Above the fireplace hung a painting of a familiar old barn. Doorways led to other rooms. Roz glanced into Mr. Sharif's office and saw a portrait of his family, including his wife. Mrs. Sharif was pretty, with dark curly hair and a bright smile. It was the same smile Roz saw on all the children, on the children. Look, Jay is crying like a baby, came Jad, giggling voice from the kitchen. When Roz walked in, the girl was chopping an onion with tears streaming down her cheeks. Roz, I order you to chop this onion for me, said Jaya, wiping her eyes. The robot picked up a knife, and in a flash, the onion was perfectly chopped and dumped into a bowl. Clearly, Roz was designed to chop onions. Roz, I order you to take the night off, Mr. Sharif laughed. The kids and I want to cook. We enjoy it. More vegetables were chopped, skillet started sizzling, delicious aromas swirled together, and before long, a magnificent meal was set on the dinner table. Oscar positioned himself below to catch food scraps, and everyone else took a seat. Mr. Sharif turned to his daughter. Would you like to say grace? The girl lowered her head. Thank you, God, for this yummy food we're about to gobble down. Amen. Thank you, Jaya, said Mr. Sharif with a wink, and thank you, Roz, for everything you've done this past year. I had my doubts, but now I can't imagine what we'd do without you. 
the children looked at each other. Then the family grabbed their knives and forks and dug into dinner. A colorful leafy salad, a plate of sautéed asparagus, creamy mashed potatoes, and buttered bread, and a tall glass of milk. The meal was beautiful, but as Roz scanned the table, her eyes kept returning to the roasted chicken. It was about the size of Bright Bill. Suddenly, the robot was full of questions. Do chickens live happy lives? Did this chicken know it would be eaten? Were humans bad for eating animals? No, thought Roz. Humans are simply following their instincts like all creatures, like Roz herself. At least the Sharifs honored this animal by giving thanks and by turning it into a beautiful, nourishing meal. After he'd finished eating, Mr. Sharif stepped out of the room and he returned a moment later carrying a violin and a bow. Growing up, I dreamed of being a musician, he said, thumping back in his chair. He tuned the instrument and put it under his chin. It all started to play. Oh, and then he started to play. His bow glided back and forth. His fingers danced across the strings and a lovely old folk song filled the room. Mr. Sharif tapped his foot and as the notes rang out, soft and then loud, slow and then fast, the song ended with a flourish and the music faded to silence. Then he rested the violin on his knee. This instrument has been in our family for a very long time, he said, since the days when Sirish Sharif built the farm. Cyrus Sharif. Roz knew that name. She unsnapped a pocket in her tool belt and pulled out a small journal. I discovered this in the old barn, she said, handing it over. The children huddled together around their father as he took the journal. They read their ancestor's name on the cover. Then they carefully opened it and turned the brittle pages. I have never seen this journal before, said Mr. Sharif. It's a piece of our family history. Kids, look at how they used to milk cows. Roz left the Sharifs like that, examining the journal, learning about their family's history. But what was their family's future? Their lives were difficult. They needed help, and Roz was about to run away forever. As she marched back to the barn that night, the robot felt something like worry and confusion and guilt. 48. The Return The robot's feelings of worry and confusion and guilt went away as soon as she heard her son's voice echoing across the farm. Ma, we're back. Bright Bill's flock appeared above the pasture, flapping and honking and laughing. They glided down to Roz, and Bright Bill took his place on his mother's shoulder. I told you we keep your son out of trouble, squawked Loudwing. Thank you, everyone, the robot spoke in her most cheerful voice. It is so good to see all of you again. The, crows trotted o- the cows trotted over, grinning and happily mooing in th- to the geese. While the herd and the flock caught up with each other, Roz and Bright Bill slipped away to speak privately. What's the plan, Ma? said Bright Bill. The plan is simple, said Roz. Tonight, under the cover of darkness, I will run away from this farm, and then you and I will begin our journey home. Chapter 49 The Goodbyes That evening was full and sad goodbyes. The first goodbye was between the flock and their young leader. The other geese wanted to help Roz and Bright Bill get home, but the journey would be dangerous, and Bright Bill refused to put his flock at risk. He demanded they return to the island without them. The geese could feel their instincts urging them onward, and they knew Roz and Bright Bill would look after each other. So they said their goodbyes and took off into the night sky. The next goodbye was between the robot and the cows. Roz marched into the pasture one last time as a herd gathered round. I guess this is it, said the robot. Thank you all for being so kind to me. Annabelle sniffled and said, I really hate goodbyes, but I'm glad you're going home where you belong. I just wish there was some way I could be helpful. Actually, there is something you can do. Roz unsnapped a pocket of her tool belt and took out the transmitter. You can hold on to this for me. Hopefully it will take a few days for Mr. Sharif to realize I am gone. Annabelle smiled as the robot gently tucked the small device under her collar. Lily and the other calves suddenly swarmed around Roz and nuzzled her legs. They all had tears in their eyes. Tess wanted to lighten the mood, but she couldn't think of anything funny to say. The other cows called out to their friend. We'll miss you, Roz. Get home safely. Don't forget about us. Roz waved to the herd. She said a silent goodbye to all the farm machines parked in the shed. Then she followed the driveway out 
to the fields where bright bills on her shoulder and the children were at her side. The last goodbye was the hardest of all. Everyone was quiet as they walked through the silvery moonlight. The past rows and rows of sprouting crops and out to the farthest corner of the farthest field, Roz turned and faced Jaya and Jad. She looked past them, back to the distant lights of the farm buildings. I have prepared the farm for my departure, said Roz. It will take care of itself for a while, but not forever. We can manage things at least until we get another robot, said Jad. This place won't be the same without you, but we'll be okay. What will you tell your father, said Roz. That is for us to worry about, said Jaya. You just worry about getting home. Roz glanced down at the tool belt strapped across her chest. Would you like this back? No, we would not, said Jad. It was a gift just for you, said Jaya. The girl pulled her brother and the robot into a big, tight hug. Beneath the sounds of the crickets were the sounds of the children crying. How will we know you made it home, said Jad. We need to know how your story ends, said Jaya. The robot muttered some animal words to her son and said to the children, If a goose ever visits this farm and presents you with a feather, you will know that I am home. The children smiled through their tears and waited for their friends to leave, but the robot didn't move. More than anything, Roz wanted to go home, and yet she was conflicted. She cared about this family and the farm, and now she was abandoning them. The robot lurched forward, then backward again, and again, as her computer brain struggled with all of these thoughts and feelings. Finally, the children gave her a gentle push she needed. Roz, we order you to run away. And the robot did as she was told. Whew. All right, guys, we'll stop there. And I hope that you're enjoying the book so far and that if you're about to head to sleep that you have the sweetest dreams ever or if you're just in your day that it continues to be a great one. And again, uh, thank you to Mr. Brown for writing this book and I hope you get to visit a library or a bookstore soon and discover another beautiful writer. Thanks you guys. I can't wait to read to you some more. Till the next time.